The state of South Dakota is getting ready to host hundreds of thousands of people this month for the 80th annual Sturgis Motorcycle Rally, just as reports of coronavirus cases start to climb. More than 250,000 people are expected to attend the rally, which starts this Friday and runs through the 16th in the small western South Dakota town. And those numbers could make the bike rally the largest public event anywhere since the coronavirus pandemic started. The event will offer businesses that depend on the rally a chance to make up losses after a downturn in tourism spending this year. But many of the Sturgis's 7,000 residents are leery about that many people coming their way, and they say it shouldn't be going on during a pandemic. Three men are in jail after a chase that ended up with what police say was a COVID-19 threat. Cass County deputies tried stopping a car early yesterday morning, but that driver took off. He was later stopped near Castleton when officers used spike strips to flatten the car's tires. Deputies say Colin Forthen of West Fargo claimed to be COVID-19 positive and intentionally cough toward the deputy who was driving him to jail. Forthen is accused of terrorizing, reckless endangerment, and driving under suspension, among other charges. Dangdit Gayu of Fargo was arrested for contributing to the delinquency of a minor and open container. Jordan Schick of West Fargo was arrested for possession of a concealed weapon and minor in consumption. Now, eight minutes before the top of the hour, let's get a check of that first alert storm team forecast. And we have another day of beautiful, bright sun out there, Lisa. That's right. We get to just carry over the weekend to start off this week. This week, we're looking at some conditions that are beautiful, mostly sunny and quiet. It is a little cool out there, though, this morning. We've got some places checking in in the 40s. Bemidji briefly dipped down to 42. We're now at 44 degrees there, so uh, likely seeing those numbers continuing to climb here over the next hour. Fargo's at 51. It's 50 in Grand Forks, 52 in Fergus Falls, and Devil's Lake's at 54 with lots of sunshine around the valley. Clear skies, light wind that's still, if we do have any, still out of the north. Uh, and that all contributes to the temperatures dipping as much as they have. But mostly we just have some calm reports and some still air out there this morning to start the day. And clear skies. You can see not much to show you on the radar in the Red River Valley or even the tri-state area. Let's take a look. We'll zip down to uh, the uh, southeastern coast at Tropical Storm Isaias. It's got 70 mile per hour winds right now. So just under hurricane status, moving to the north now at 13 miles per hour. And as we put this into motion, we'll zoom in a little bit more. You can see the heavy rain associated with it nearing the coast of the Carolinas and Georgia right now. And it's actually expected to intensify to a Category 1 hurricane uh, at some point today before making landfall in the next 24 hours. So things are looking a lot quieter for us, of course, here at the Valley. We've got that sunshine a beautiful sunrise and temperatures that are going to be on the rise back into the mid to some upper 70s for today mostly sunny skies and that wind should be light all day long so it's just looking like a nice uh, forecast a real a real nice one heading into the start of the week and Tuesday looks great too I mean we'll be in the 70s we'll warm up a little bit more to some low 80s in some spots and then Wednesday we start to see that change chances for rain and thunder uh, Wednesday night and into Thursday we're heating up too and cooking up more storms heading into the weekend and temperatures that could reach 90 by the time we get Get to Sunday. Time now for traffic. Let's check in with Devin Fry with the Valley Today's Traffic on Thanks, Lisa. We're finishing up our morning drive for this hour on I-94. We are heading west towards Bismarck. Now, the traffic flow has continued to grow since we first got out on these roadways this morning. You can see over in the eastbound lanes, it's also starting to get a little bit busier, but over here in the west is where we've seen the most as far as traffic flow goes. Now, it's a little bit more congested back near the University Drive uh, overpass area, but uh, overall, what you see is pretty much what you get out here on the roadways. It's definitely not a tough morning drive at all. And th if this is your most crowded roadway, then it's a pretty good morning commute. Looking down on I-29, looks like a very similar situation. Not a whole lot of holding up the traffic flow there. There is, of course, the uh, lane closure and reduced speeds on the road work from 32nd Street to the tri-level interchange. There is, they are moving slower through that spot, but that is to be expected at this point in the morning drive. We're going to go ahead and keep checking out these roadways in the next hour on the Fargo CW to see how the traffic flow grows and evolves. But for right now, for your traffic on the move, I'm Devin Fry.
A Sheldon, North Dakota family is picking up the pieces after an accident caused a fire that burned down their family home. On Wednesday night, Shannon Bat Brash and his son were in the garage working on a motorcycle. And then he says when they started it, it exploded. And within minutes, the four bedroom house was in flames. Shannon and his son suffered blisters from the fire, but the whole family was able to get out of the house. They saved one dog and their cat, but they lost two other pets. If you want to donate to the GoFundMe account that's been set up for the family, use your VNL News app and click on this story. An electrical malfunction is likely the cause of a fire at a vacant hotel in West Fargo. Fire alarms went off around 1030 Saturday night at the Howard Johnson Hotel along Main on the east side of town. Fire crews found the sprinkler system had put out the fire and damage was contained to one room. The building has been vacant for a number of months, so there were no injuries. Damage is estimated at ten dollars to $15,000. The Hotel Donaldson in downtown Fargo is temporarily shut down after an employee tested positive for the coronavirus. Management says on Facebook that the employee was not at work when they got sick and hasn't been back since. The HODO says the rest of their employees will be tested and they hope to get guidance from Fargo Cass public health officials later today. The United Way of Cass Clay is still short about 1,350 backpacks to give back to students as they're returning back to school in the fall but you can help. You can still drop off those much needed supplies until 4.30 this afternoon at the Fargo Dome. In the Valley today's Brian Sherrod joins us live from the Fargo Dome with more on how we can help them meet their goal. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Jordan and Lisa. And it was like you just said, you know, they still need 4,649 backpack or they have that much actually. 1,351 is what they need. So I'm here with Kevin Smalling to talk about how you can help. You know, you have these numbers mixed up a little bit. So <laughs> scared me a little bit. <laughs> I got a little bit nervous. Yeah. Yes. So talk about the importance of collecting these school supplies, these backpacks, especially this year. Well, it's, well, especially this year. I mean, every year it's important, yeah. but, um, you know, kids to have these back, these supplies to start their school year, it's a big thing for them just psychologically. Um, just gives them that confidence to go into the school year, knowing they have everything else that the, some of their peers do. Uh, I just think it really sets them up for the for the entire year, and it really sets them up for life um, when you when you do that. Now, of course, this year with the pandemic, it's forced us to do a lot of. You know, I've, I've, this is my 12th year on the committee, so I feel like you know, hey, I'm, you know, I'm this veteran around here that knows what's going on, and for the most part, I do. But with the, some of the changes this year that we've had to make, I almost feel like a new committee member in some ways. But um, yeah, we've, we've adjusted, we're making changes, we're doing a lot of things differently for the distribution. We're going to have nine different distributions now versus the two we had before on the Saturday and the Tuesday here at the Fargo Dome. We can't do that anymore, but um, the beat moves on and we're, you know, we still have our, our $6,000 or our 6000 backpack goal. Perfect, and thank you again, Kevin, of course, for being in front of me. And, you know, the volunteers will be here around 9 o'clock this morning, and you can also donate all the school supplies and backpacks until 4.30 this afternoon here at the Fargo Dome. All right, Brian reporting live this morning. Thank you very much. An FM area mom is using her experience to help parents who are considering homeschooling their kids this fall. She is running a consulting business called That Homeschooling Friend. You can bring questions and concerns and curriculum and support will be provided. We have links on our website if you're interested in learning more. You can find that on our VNL News app. Okay, let's get the answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, a new survey found that the average American household does this about 18 times a month. The answer is argue about doing the dishes. You know, I would be on the high side of that. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like that's every single day in the Bedeau house. Who's I feel like it should be 18 plus times a month. Actually... <laughs> 30 times a month, I think, would be probably the more accurate description. I agree. I agree. All right. Well, the Today Show and CBS this morning are just about to start, but the Valley today, it rolls on. We have more live up-to-the-minute news and weather coming up for you pretty quick here on the Fargo CW. Plus, we'll get another check of that beautiful Monday forecast that we have in store with Lisa Green. Stay with us, and thanks for watching.